Good morning, friends. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Kaylin. I am a fourth year PhD candidate in history and African American studies at Yale. And we are starting off with an excellent morning. I was doing some filming for my digital brand accelerator course. I'm going to be opening up the third cohort this week. So it will be live when this video goes up. And I have been working on some additional curriculum, some bonus videos based on the recommendations of the students within my course. So things like how to build an online community, how to edit on Final Cut, how to create social media assets for a business. I have so many ideas and so many things that I want to create with this course. And so it's just been really fun and creative. I have a meeting with my new research assistant this morning. Mimi is going to be helping me with a couple of history and information videos. And I am just so excited to work with her. She was a public history student and I am just really excited to be working on these projects. And then later today, I have a meeting with my advisor. So it's gonna be a busy one. We've got dissertation work to do. We've got content planning. So it is going to be a really fun week and I can't wait to take you along with me. for a quick pause to thank the sponsor of today's video, which is Ana Luisa. Ana Luisa is a carbon neutral, sustainably sourced jewelry company out of New York. And I've been working with them for over two years. I wear their jewelry pieces every single day. And if you've been watching my videos for any period of time, you've definitely heard about them before. But with the holiday season coming up and thinking about gifts for our friends and family and how it is that we would like to celebrate, I just wanted to show you a couple of the pieces that I've been wearing recently that I'm absolutely obsessed with. First and foremost, I'm not a huge jewelry person, but I have a couple of pieces from Ana Luisa that I wear every single day. I wear them in the shower, I wear them out, and I am absolutely obsessed. For example, this bracelet with the little jewel in the center, I have had and has been on my body for over a year now. And the three rings that I have on, I do not take off ever. So the first one I have on here is my Chloe ring on my index finger. I love it so much so that when I lost mine, I actually asked Ana Luisa if they would send me a second one because I just love this braided design and also love that it bears the same name as my best friend. On my ring finger, on my right hand, I have this crescent ring and it has such beautiful detailing. I also have this in silver for when I wanna mix it up. And then a newer one to my collection is this little gold heart ring that I have on my index finger on my left hand. And I just think it is so beautiful. And today the necklace that I'm wearing is this beautiful little pendant with a rose design in the center. I personally really enjoy wearing very dainty feminine jewelry, but they also have so many wonderful statement pieces and so many options. So if you wanna go ahead and check out their pieces, they have new designs coming out all the time and it is the perfect little gift for yourself or for someone that you love, especially this holiday season. Go ahead and check out the link in the description as well as my discount code to place your order. And thank you again to Ana Luisa for sponsoring today's video. I am back from the gym and got a bunch of work done this morning, which was really nice. I ended up getting some filming done, had my meeting with Mimi, did some content editing and planning as well as admin. Then I went to the gym for a yoga class. I was really sick last week and haven't been able to go and work out. So I wanted to take it a little bit easy, especially because my asthma has been acting up really badly, but 
I'm slowly on the mend and slowly feeling back to 100%. And now that I'm back, it is time to work on the dissertation. I am struggling big time with how it is to describe the evolution of matrilineal and paternal descent slave law within colonial legislatures. What I found so far is that it appears as though the colonial legislatures were reacting to pressures from judicial cases, so from court cases where there was a freedom suit, and then individual statutes were enacted into the legal code and then later consolidated. What I'm missing is what factors led to that consolidation. And I'm still trying to figure that part out, but I have a meeting with my advisor later today to discuss my progress. And I am feeling like I have not made nearly as much progress as I should have. This is all part of the process. I feel like with writing a dissertation, it just ebbs and flows. And I'm currently at the stage where I'm trying to ramp it back up again. So I'm gonna go ahead and dive in and see what we can get accomplished for this meeting and hope that I can get some words down on paper. I've already gotten a mini paragraph written in the time since I've gotten back from the gym. So we're just gonna keep slowly chipping away and then hope that we can actually make some progress. <laughs> It tastes very lingonberry-y. Lingonberry, that's it. Yeah. Hi friends, I am done with my advisor meeting. Got a bunch of work done on dissertation prep. Had a very good meeting. And I now have a solid deadline of January 5th to get done a full fellowship application to send off to my advisor, which means that I have to get the written sample, the cover letter, research proposal, CV, all of that done and sent to them by January 5th. So that way we can then have a meeting mid-January and I could submit everything in February. It's a bit daunting, but I think we'll make good progress on it. Now I'm gonna take the rest of the night off because every time I have an advisor meeting afterward, I just feel quite exhausted because of how much prep and stress I experienced beforehand. And I'm gonna go ahead and finish up the second book in the Throne of Glass series. This is Crown of Midnight. I really loved the first book and I will say the beginning of this book was a bit slow, but then I, once I hit about 150 pages in, it really took off and I only have this tiny section left. So I think I can get this done tonight because I really want to know what happens. I've heard that there's a bit of a plot twist at the end and I just want to know what happens. I also have so many books on the reading list and I'm trying to get through about two books a week. I'm gonna dive in, do a bit of reading, have some dessert, have a nice quiet evening, and then we are back to the books tomorrow.
Good morning, friends. It is now Tuesday. I am up this morning getting some work done on admin, and then I'm going to be diving straight into the dissertation. So I've got my cup of tea and we are ready to get moving. I had such a good night because I finished Crown of Midnight and I was so buzzing from the ending that I ended up going and starting Assassin's Blade and I got I think 75 pages in and was up until midnight, but those little highs of getting excited about a book is just something I think is worth leaning into. So I am going to sip on my tea, get some work done, and take you along for a day of dissertation writing. <sighs> such a good day. I had a big breakthrough with writing on the dissertation and actually think that the argument that I was running with the entire time I've been in this PhD program is actually not the approach I'm going to take with the dissertation. I think the last couple of months what I've been struggling with is trying to make an argument specifically about gender. And because I'm looking at matrilineal descent law, it made sense to consider how race and gender played into the imaginations of lawmakers. But what I'm finding by reviewing these statutes is that the legal question that results in an answer being matrilineal descent is more so a question about inherited property or intergenerational property. Therefore, I think the approach that I was taking and focusing specifically on reproductive labor is a part of the answer, is a part of the approach. But in fact, what I should be focusing on is the concept of generational inheritance and how the law focuses on children as a site of regulation. I wouldn't have gotten there had I not taken this approach of doing this really fine grained analysis of the statutes from these North American colonies. And I'm also looking at the Caribbean, I'm looking at Bermuda and St. Kitts and Barbados, and it's a lot of work. And I don't obviously have all of the things that I need in order to cohesively make my argument. I just feel like I'm finally a bit closer to where I need to be in order to write this written sample. So I am so glad I had a meeting with my advisor yesterday. I'm so glad that I was working on the dissertation today, even though I've been really struggling with writing, that I have continuously tried every single day to just look at the document and try to find a way through. And I think we're finally getting somewhere. Very, very pleased with that. It has been a very good day. I feel so energetic and happy now that I am not sick and feeling healthy again. And I have a conference that I'm leaving for tomorrow. And I'm just going to enjoy the rest of my night with my partner and doing a little bit of reading. I, as I said last night, I finished Crown of Midnight. And while I am reading Assassin's Blade, I am trying to decide if I want to read one of my other books on this beautiful bookshelf. So I am just gonna play around with what I want to, to read next, but I'm gonna take you along for the rest of the evening, but I am done working on the dissertation today. <sighs> I'm so pleased. <laughs>